In this video, we will cover finding the derivatives of inverse functions. First, let's review what are inverse functions. If we have the functions f of x equals the cube root of x plus 7 and g of x equals x cubed minus 7, these functions are considered inverses because they are reflections of each other in the line y equals x. We have f of x and g of x on the graph here, and they are mapped over the line y equals x to form each other. On inverse functions, the x and y values are swapped. So for example, if we had the point 3, 6 on the normal function f, then on the function f inverse, we would have the point 6, 3. This is going to be very important later. So there, we have several ways that we can write that these functions are inverses. We can say f inverse of x is equal to g of x, g inverse of x is equal to f of x, or f of g of x equals g of f of x equals x. These are all ways to indicate that f and g are inverses. Not all functions have inverses. Only one-to-one -one functions have inverses. There can be an inverse for a function that's not one-to-one, -one, but it needs a restricted domain. Let's practice by finding the inverse of f of x equals 6x cubed minus 2. So first, we need to rewrite it in terms of x and y. So I'm going to write y equals 6x cubed minus 2. And then we switch the x and y variables, because remember, on inverse functions, the x and y values are swapped. So I'm going to write it as x is equal to 6y cubed minus 2. And now I work to isolate y. So our inverse function would be y equals the cube root of x plus 2 over 6. And if we want to write it using inverse notation, we would write f inverse of x is equal to the cube root of x plus 2 over 6. F inverse of x, it looks like it's f to the power of negative 1 of x, but don't get these two confused. This notation just means f inverse of x. So we have a special rule for differentiating an inverse function. If we're trying to take the derivative of f inverse of x, that is equal to 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. The table below shows selected values of f of x and its derivative f prime of x. Let g of x equal f inverse of x. In part A, we're being asked to find g prime of 4. So this is a bit of a problem because we don't have any information about g in our table. We don't have g or g prime. However, they give us this piece of information, which tells us that g and f are inverses. So when we're being asked to find g prime of 4, that's the same thing as being asked to find the derivative of f inverse of x, because we know that g of x is equal to f inverse of x. So we have derivative of f inverse of x, and then we will plug in 4 when we need to find that. But first, we're going to find the derivative of f inverse of x. So we know from our rule over here, derivative is 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. And now I'm going to plug in 4. So first, I need to find what this is. I need to find f inverse of 4. When I'm finding something like this, I find it helpful to make a little table, or not, not even a table, just kind of listing out the points of regular f, regular function f, and the inverse of function f. So I need to find a point where the inverse of function f, where that x-coordinate is 4, so that I can find what is this y-coordinate. And remember, on the inverse, the x and y-coordinates are swapped. So I'm going to be looking for a point on my graph for original f of x, where the y-coordinate is 4. And it looks like that is when x is equal to 2. So my point is 2, 4 on regular f, and that means on f inverse, my point is going to be 4, 2. So now when I go back to my problem, I have f inverse of 4. I can plug in 2 there. So now I have 1 over f prime of 2. And my table tells me what f prime of 2 is. I go to 2. f prime of 2 is 1 sixth. So it is 1 over 1 sixth, or 6. Now I'm going to follow a very similar process for finding g prime of negative 1. So remember, g is the same thing as the inverse of f. So what I'm really looking for is the derivative of f inverse of negative 1. And then I can use my rule. I'll apply this rule. So it's really equal to 1 over f prime of f inverse of negative 1. And now I need to find f inverse of negative 1. So for regular function f, I'm going to need a point with a y-coordinate of 1 so that when I switch the points for f inverse, it's my x-coordinate is going to wind up being negative 1 because that's what I need to find here. Now I look at my table, and it looks like at the x-coordinate 0, the y-coordinate is negative 1. So on original f, we have 0, negative 1. On f inverse of x, we have negative 1, 0. So now I'll plug in 0 for this. 
And I can look up at my table and see that f prime of zero is one half. So I have one over one half, which is equal to two. That is g prime of negative one. The table shows values of the differentiable functions f and g and f prime, the derivative of f, at selected values of x. If f of g of x equals g of f of x equals x, what is g prime of negative six? And here we have a table that shows various values at negative six, which is the value that we're looking at, but we only have f, g, and f prime, and we need g prime. So the way that we're gonna find that, we know that f and g are inverses because of this piece of information that they gave us. So another way that we can write g prime of negative six is the derivative of f inverse of negative six, because we know that g is the same thing as f inverse. g and f are inverses of each other. And then we can use our rule to find this. So this is equal to one over f prime of f inverse of negative six. Now to find f inverse of negative six, we're gonna make a note of what our original f is and what our f inverse is going to be. So we need our f inverse x coordinate to be negative six. We need negative six something. So that means that the y coordinate of our original f needs to be six. So then we look at this and we see where is the y coordinate of our original f negative six. And it looks like that occurs at four. We have the point four negative six on our original graph of f. So that means that on our graph of f inverse, we're going to have the point negative six, four, because the x and y values are swapped. So when we go to find f inverse of negative six, we know that that's equal to four. So this is really one over f prime of four. Now we go over to our table. It says f prime of four is six. So this is really one sixth. G prime of negative six equals one sixth. Now we need to write an equation for the line tangent to f inverse of x at x equals negative six. Remember, f inverse of x is the same thing as g of x. So we're really writing an equation for the line tangent to g of x at x equals negative six. And we already found what the slope of that tangent line is going to be. We know m is equal to one sixth from this previous problem. So now we just need to find the point so that we can write it in point slope form. So we need to find the point where g of x has an x-coordinate of negative six. We know our x-coordinate is gonna be negative six. So g of negative six is equal to four. So now we take this slope and this point and write it in point slope form. This is the equation of a line tangent to f inverse of x at x equals negative six. Let f be a differentiable function such that f of four equals one third, f of nine equals four, f prime of four equals six, and f prime of nine equals negative three. The function h is differentiable and h of x equals f inverse of x for all x. Find h prime of four. So with the information that I'm given here, h of x equals f inverse of x. That means that h and f are inverse functions. And I'm being asked to find h prime of four, but I'm not given any information about h. I'm only given information about f. So what I'm gonna do is rewrite this in terms of f. So I'm gonna say um, we are looking for the derivative of the inverse of f at four. And then I can apply my rule. So that's equal to one over f prime of f inverse of four. Now I need to find f inverse of four. So for my regular f, it's going to be something comma four so that when I have f inverse, it can be four comma something. And it looks like if I have my points, I have the points four, one third and nine, four. Nine, four is the one I need to match my original f. So that means that on the graph of the inverse of f, there's going to be the point four, nine. So nine is what gets plugged in here. So I have one over f prime of nine. And then I know that f prime of nine equals negative three. So this is equal to negative one third. H prime of four equals negative one third. Let f and g be differentiable functions such that f of x equals g inverse of x. g of six is equal to negative one, g of negative two equals six, g prime of six equals negative three, and g prime of negative two equals negative two. Find f prime of six, then write the equation of the tangent line to f at x equals six. So this, this piece of information tells me that f and g are inverses. So what I'm going to do, because I'm first looking for f prime of six, but I'm not given any information in terms of f, it's all given in terms of g. So I'm going to rewrite this, f prime of six, I'm gonna rewrite it as the derivative of g inverse of six. And then applying my rule, that's equal to one over g prime of g inverse of six. 
Now to find g inverse of six, I'm gonna write out what my original g function was and what my g inverse function point should be. So on my original function, I need something with a y coordinate of six to make an, the x coordinate of the inverse be six. So it looks like I'm gonna to need to use the point negative two, six here. And that will mean that the y coordinate of my inverse is going to be negative two. Now I have one over g prime of negative two. g prime of negative two equals negative two, so this is negative one half. f prime of six is equal to negative one half. But that's not all that I'm being asked to do. I'm also being asked to find the equation of the line tangent to f at x equals six. So again, I'm not given any information about the point here. I already have my slope. But what I need to find is the point so that I can use point slope form. So at x equals six, I know that f and g are inverses. So I need there to be a point with a y coordinate of six for the g graph so that my f graph or my inverse of g, g inverse or f, has an x coordinate of six because x needs to equal six. So then I go look up here. It looks like I have g of negative two equals six. So negative two gets filled in here. So now this is my point because I'm looking for the line tangent to f. So this is my slope. My slope is negative one half and my point is six, negative two. So then I write my equation in point slope form. That's the equation of the line tangent to f at x equals six. f of x equals x cubed plus one half x plus two and f of two equals 11. If f inverse is the inverse of f, find f inverse prime of 11. So this notation is a bit confusing, so I'm gonna rewrite this as the derivative of f inverse of 11. And then I can use my formula. I know that that's equal to one over f prime of f inverse of 11. So on my original f graph, the point that they gave me was 2, 11. This means that on my inverse of f graph, I'm going to have the point 11, 2. So f inverse of 11 is equal to two one over f prime of two. Now I'm not given f prime of two anywhere up here, but what I am given is the formula. So I'm going to find the derivative of this formula. f prime of x is equal to three x squared plus one half. Now I can plug in two. This is equal to 12.5. So my answer is one over 12.5. This is equivalent to 0 0.08. Let j of x equal x cubed plus one. If j of h of x equals h of j of x is equal to x and j of two equals nine, what is the value of h prime of nine? So instead of finding h prime of nine, what I'm going to find is the derivative of j inverse of nine, because we're given here that j and h are inverse functions. So now I can apply my formula. This is one over j prime of j inverse of nine. And for my regular j points, I'm given the point two, nine. So that means on my j inverse function, the point is nine, two. So j inverse of nine is equal to two. So this is really one over j prime of two. And I'm not given j prime of two anywhere here, but I am given j of x, so I'm going to find j prime of x now. So j prime of x is equal to three x squared. And then if I plug in two, I get three times two squared, which is 12. So this is equal to 1 12th. H prime of nine is equal to 1 12th. Write the equation of the line tangent to the graph of H at X equals nine. So I already found part of this because I need a point and a slope to write the equation. I already know that my slope is 1 12th because I found it up here. So now I just need a point on the graph of H. And the graph of H is the inverse of J. And I already found a point on the inverse of J up here. It's nine two. So nine two is my point. Now I'm going to use point slope form and write the equation. This is the equation of the line tangent to the graph of H at X equals nine. 